In this video, we're mixing Soraya Tech resins to create stronger parts. Stick around. If you've printed with resin before, then you can appreciate the excellent surface quality and rigidity that the material yields. You'll probably also know that it can be very brittle. Now that makes it tricky to use for functional and mechanical parts, so choosing the right resin can be like magic. You find what works for you and you stick with it, but that'll limit your results. For the consumer market, Soraya Tech has some of the most exotic and affordable resins. They claim to be tough and flexible and even engineering grade, but what does that even mean? Today we're taking a look at three of their best resins, Blue, Tenacious, and Fast. And more specifically, the neat property of them being cross-compatible, meaning you can mix them in any proportion, creating custom formulations. To get an idea of what to expect, today we're going to create six mixtures of these three resins and see how they perform under stress. But first, let's see how they describe them. First up is Blue, an easy-to-use, tough resin that performs under stress, balancing between strength and hardness. It's ideal for making functional parts that are strong, that require some flexibility. Next is Tenacious, a resin that has great flexibility, strong impact resistance with strength and resilience when used in thicker parts. Last is Fast, an affordable resin that's easy to print, quick to cure, and easy to clean. Rigid in character and ideal for printing miniatures and props. To summarize it, Blue's their toughest resin, Tenacious is their most flexible, and Fast is their easiest to use. That said, how do mixtures of these resins hold up? Today we'll be testing the following six mixtures. Pure Blue, Pure Fast, Pure Tenacious, and then 50-50 mixtures of Blue Fast, Blue Tenacious, and Tenacious Fast. This should give us a general understanding of how they behave and what to expect at scale. For the test, we'll be performing three break tests of each of the mixtures to see how they perform. The dog bone shape I'll use was designed quickly in Fusion 360 as a simple 3mm extrude that's 5mm wide with mount holes on each end. For the test, I'll be fixing one side of the sample to a fixed plate and pulling up on the alternate side using an inexpensive scale to capture the pulling force. The intent of the test is to see how strong and forgiving the various mixtures are in real world application. Stressing the part to failure, I perform three tests per mixture, capturing the force required that caused the part to fail. And while all the parts exhibited relatively good flexibility over standard resins, the point at which they would fracture varied. The captured results of each mixture were then averaged to come up with the overall mixture limit. The results were fairly consistent and mostly met my expectations. So let's run down the results, from weakest to strongest. Fast came in at the bottom with an average of 5.48 pounds to failure the most brittle material. Next up was the fast blue mixture, which came in with an average of 5.8 pounds to failure. A little stronger, but still brittle nonetheless. Next up was blue with an average of seven pounds to failure, followed by fast and tenacious mixture, coming in at 7.23 pounds to failure, which kind of makes sense because fast being brittle and tenacious being the most flexible, it's about what blue is. Coming in second was the blue tenacious, yielding 11.7 pounds to failure. And the strongest mixture, not being a mixture at all, was just pure tenacious, pulling over 38 pounds without failing. Now while that's ranked by strength, it's important to know that while strength may be an important factor to usable parts, rigidity is equally important. And to that regard, the rigidity of these mixtures were almost inversely proportional to their strength. Tenacious being the most durable was the least rigid material, and while it could be twisted and distorted without fracture, it would take some time for it to return to its natural shape. And this won't be very practical for production parts in most cases. Conversely, the most rigid of resins were less flexible and would fracture before bending with any significance. All of the mixtures, on the other hand, were workable with sandpaper and lent themselves well to post-processing. Based on these results, I'll be focusing on the blue tenacious mixture for my projects, which build upon the toughness of the blue resin while adding more flexibility from the tenacious to handle the impact and shear forces a little bit better. I'll probably adjust the mix, leaning towards more of a 60-40 mixture of Blue Tenacious to keep the rigidity of Blue. Going through this process, I realize I don't have a good setup to perform these types of material tests, and the commercial equipment's pretty expensive. In the future, I'll likely design a DIY IZAD or impact test equipment to be more thorough and accurate about the test procedure and data collection. For now, this has helped me to make a distinction that I need to move forward uh, with my next big resin project. These are some of the parts right here which I'll share more about in the upcoming videos. For now, here's a sneak peek.
Hopefully it was a useful video for you. It was a little bit short, but I couldn't find any results on YouTube when I was looking for Soriatec mixture uh, performance. And so I wanted to share you these brief results that I got when testing those various mixtures. Hopefully it'll help you set your expectations for using these Soriatec resins to your advantage. Changing the percentage to design a mixture that gives you the results you're looking for and more mileage from your resin printer and engineering parts. That's gonna do it for today. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. It'll keep you in the know on future updates. And if you like this particular video, give it a big thumbs up. It lets me know you care and that's kind of how the system works. I'd like to give a big shout out to my channel supporters. Thank you for all you do. If you're interested, you can also help out by purchasing products through the affiliate links in the description, Patreon, or just giving this video a big thumbs up. Have a great day and in the meantime, be safe, have fun, and I can't wait to see you next time. Hey, if you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. It's how we're building the community. Also allow me to bring better content. Also, check me out on these other social networks. There's lots of cool stuff there, too.